everybody, and welcome to episode four of the Tennis One podcast. Today, we're going to break down the women's side of the Netflix show Breakpoint. In case you missed last episode, we talked all about the ATP episodes for the Breakpoint series. Five episodes were released last Friday. And today we're going to break down all of the women. And of course, there's been a ton of action in the Australian Open and a lot of surprises. Patrick has been uh, working the late night Aussie shift. So Patrick, do you want to lead us off and kind of fill everybody in on what they've missed in AO? Yeah, well, honestly, I I even miss some of it because these matches are going so late. Um, (laughs) You know, even though I'm working from like... 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Somebody, I mean, what time did that Murray Kokonaka's match finish like in Central Time? Wasn't it like 10 o'clock or something? Yeah, I think it was like 10:15 or something. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so so you can't see it all, you know. Um, but I, uh, I I couldn't believe that match. Like I I went to sleep when it was uh, Murray down two sets to Love and and like 2-0 in the third, and I just was like, yeah, this is it. Too bad, and uh, turn it off and. And that was at like 8 a.m. So <laughs> I had already tried to stay up a little bit, but but yeah, and then to to wake up and see that he came back and won. I mean, what a what a joke. That guy is just such a fighter. And uh yeah, I mean you you probably actually saw the end of the match. What what was uh what was it like? I saw some of the highlights, but yeah, it was crazy. And he just totally feeds. I mean, they had a really good crowd for what was it like 4 30 a.m or something australian time or like four o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning i mean they still had a huge crowd there and he kind of i, I felt bad for tanasi because that's really tough i mean he could have done it in three murray pushed that fourth set with the tie break and then just from there murray just i don't know how he does it i don't know how he's able to push through especially i know at his age and just kind of what, what he's had to deal with But yeah, he totally just fed off the energy and pushed through it and came out on top and just, just, you could tell he loves it. I mean, it's tough with how, how late that went. I saw there was a little bit of controversy with them not being able to go to the bathroom and he was getting kind of mad about that, but yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, first I'd just say that like Murray has a metal hip and (laughs) To see him running down those overheads in that point. I mean, there's like a clip of it in our app, but like, was that five or six overheads that he got back from Tanasi and and one that I mean that that's one of the best points I've ever seen. And uh and then just, you know, obviously, regardless of how many people were left, it sounded like just a full stadium, right? Because it was <laughs> yeah. just oh so exciting. So yeah, I'm I'm pumped to watch his match uh later tonight. He he plays late, so hopefully he's had like a little time to rest and uh he's gonna need it because he plays batista goot who's like one of the most consistent players ever this guy like just he's been i don't know he's just been like a top 20 guy for so long and he just gets everything and and i think murray's lost the last three times he's played him um i think 2016 was the last time murray won so he's he's got his hands full and especially if he's still feeling a little tired but um yeah the the late night thing I don't know where I stand. I mean, I, you know, obviously the tournament directors kind of just want to do what they've always done and not really um, right change it. Cause there's just a lot of, when you run a tournament year in and year out, you just rely on a lot of things being the same. And uh, so sometimes making one change to how it works can affect a lot of other aspects of the tournament. So that's probably why he kind of just wants to stick with it, but yeah, you know, with social media and uh, all the players kind of, speaking in unison we'll see i mean this is where that ptpa that players union that uh that djokovic and pospisil started can maybe maybe do some damage especially now that they have like some you know legit players on their on their board but um yeah but yeah and then court of medvedev did you see any of that yes i'm so excited that sebi's moving on that was such a huge win for him and to do it in straights i mean straight sets that's crazy he yeah. he's really fun to watch and it was it's cool just to you know how exciting it is for him because he won it in juniors right in 2018 mm-hmm. yeah. the Australian Open his dad won it I heard him say on court before he was two years before he was born or something oh, yeah. and then his sisters have both won in golf in Australia so they kind of have a lot of history in Australia so I I would love to see him you know go further and further in this tournament and just really I mean he's playing so well it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they uh his family's got a lot of history down in Australia and 
You know, I, I think it's just like they're a really chill family and Australia is a really chill country. So maybe it just it's a good fit. But um, yeah, Cord is hitting so clean and like definitely the best he's ever played. Obviously, almost beat Djokovic had a match point in Adelaide. And uh, honestly, the match today um, against Medvedev, like really the only time he should have felt nervous was like he was kind of, you know, he was getting a little tight. But beyond that, when he was like, playing i mean he was controlling the points he you know like yeah. medvedev really couldn't do anything aside from the times when it got you know down to the end of a set and and quarter was gonna have to close it out it just uh he still has some room for improvement in uh in the in the closing out of matches but obviously he did that one so hopefully that that'll go a long way for him and uh excited to see what he can do moving forward but um yeah and then i guess on the women's side the top half to me is so strong. Um, I don't know if you've seen yeah. it, but like, I, I think the winner's going to come out of the top half, but you know, Sviantec is up there and like Sviantec, Goff and Pagula are just like, just wrong Dominant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Pagula though, I, has she dropped a set yet in this tournament? I don't no, think she I has. She hasn't lost a set this year. <laughs> she She's yeah. Like seven she's and like zero in matches and she unbelievable to watch. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know how much like the Demar Hamlin thing has to do with just like inspiring her, or like if she just I don't know had a great great off season of practice and uh, is feeling confident because I mean she beats Fiontech two and two in the United Cup, and uh, so I think they play in the semis if uh, if they both keep winning. So that'll be I mean okay. to me the winner of that match is going to win the tournament, but. Yeah. I don't know. I guess the bottom half you have Garcia and Sabalenka still hanging in there, but it's pretty. It's much more wide open. So for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, and no, and no golf, Netflix players left. <laughs> golf exciting too. I'm excited yeah, for, for her. Sure. She's so fun. She's so she's just like so cute. She's adorable. Yeah. Like so what did you think of her so TikTok bubbly? Video? Oh, it was so funny. And I love how she called out her dad and was like the comments were coming after him. Yeah. And her parents are so like they're just so adorable and cute. And they did, you know what? That was a hard dance that she tried to teach them. I was like wow coca you're she's a good she's a good dancer i think she's just yeah. good at everything that she does i don't think it matters <laughs> yeah. uh but yeah i i think it's fun that she's kind of that generation and she's on tiktok and yeah is just very very much herself in all aspects on and off the court so love to mm -hmm. see her go far as well i definitely miss that uh i miss the tiktok generation i'm a little older than that but uh <laughs> It shocks me. She must just be good at dancing because it shocks me like how all these people can learn these dances so quickly and like, oh my gosh. But it is always funny when they drag somebody into the video that, uh, you oh, know. yeah, the, the comments did come for her dad. I, I had to go look at the video, of course, after that. And I was like, oh yeah, they're really not holding back coming after Coco's dad. So yeah, <laughs> so funny. Um, okay, before we get into the Netflix episode, let's just look at the draft real quick for uh, for those of you guys <laughs> who uh, maybe this is the first time you're listening to our, our podcast, but in the, uh, let's see, second episode, we did a draft of the Australian Open players for men and women, and it was broken into five categories that we each had to pick one player in those categories. And uh, every time they win a match, we get a point. And so we had myself and Madison and then Nate Walroth from Tennis Point draft so looking at the men, uh, it looks like I'm winning currently. Uh, with, You're killing with it. <laughs> 10 points. Uh, and I have three players left. So I have uh, Sitsi Paz, Sinner, and Alexi Poprin, who, if you if you haven't seen his post-match interview oh. after he beat Fritz the other day, you got to go watch it. It's it's in the app as well. But like, geez, he's just he he's just holding back tears and and uh so emotional and yeah, I mean, he he said it like he's won as many matches this year as he did all of last year. He, for being a really good player, he just like I don't know, just didn't have the confidence last year for whatever reason. But he's yeah, he's got it now. So it'll be exciting. He sure to does see him play <laughs> play. Uh, I, I believe tonight. So in the U.S. anyway. Uh, so I have ten points, and then Madison and Nate are tied with eight <laughs> points. Uh, but. Nate has three players left, whereas Madison only has one player left. So she's going to yeah. need, you're going to need Felix to make a run. I know I, I have confidence in him, but I wish I had one more player just in case, because then as we've talked about the Netflix curse, 
knocking out players left yeah. and right. Uh, he might be the last one. I think he is. <laughs> he is uh, the last I, one. Yeah, everybody else is out. So everyone else. And he almost lost. I mean, he's he's had a few a uh, few matches Close where calls. I mean, he had to come back in that that one. It was a five setter, I think, in the second round. So yeah, we'll see uh, see what he can do. But then Nate has Djokovic, which you know that's that's, that's probably looking him. good. That's a good, that's a good bet. <laughs> yeah. So even he's got three players, but Djokovic probably counts as four because that's, <laughs> and then he's got Holger Runa and Korda, yeah. Korda, who's playing great. So his, yeah, his he, team's looking he's good. He's stacked kind of actually. Dang. Yeah. I, even though he's down two to me right now, I would, I would trade my team for his at the moment. So we'll see how it shakes out. Um, and then on the women, we've got, let's see, I'm winning. I have 11 points and I have Sviantek, Goff, and Krejcikova left. So what that's, uh, <laughs> so that's good. I'm feeling strong about that. Uh, but Nate, Nate has um, 10 points. So one behind me, but he has four players left instead of just three like me. So he has Sabalenka, Pagula, Azarenka, and Bencic. And then Madison still got one left, but it is, uh, it's your past champion, Elise Mertens. So we'll, uh, see what see yeah. see if she can keep it going and she plays her doubles partner next uh several so yeah yeah that'll be a tough match i uh yeah i'm you know we you can, not much you can do no and it's so you, it's so hard to predict these tournaments i mean oh, yeah. it really is yeah anything can happen in a grand slam for sure so yeah. it's uh yeah it's not easy but um <laughs> we'll see how it shakes out you never know mertens <laughs> yeah. could be the ao champ this year so yeah uh, <laughs> you never know you never know oh all right so let's get into the netflix series breakpoint we're gonna break down the yes, women's yes. side today like you said we did the men's the other day let's just start off first impression of the of the the women the episodes that featured them what what kind of stood out to you yeah um it was a good group of women we had isla maria Zachary. Um, Ans Jabor and then Paula Bedosa. So I feel like those were some pretty strong women and also strong personalities to follow. I really thought that that was a really good display of kind of the different, not only personalities, but style of play on tour for the women's side. I really, I thought that those were really great showcases of the sport. Um, obviously Isla, you know, her episode, she's going to be featured in in the part two of the series because yeah, of her right. us open stint but um this unfortunately in her episode she lost the first round in the australian open so that was tough but it was also kind of it was good to see i mean to kind of see what goes into it and she had a really tough opponent in paula pedosa pedosa the first round so it was mm -hmm. it was interesting to just kind of see you know how you how you kind of pick up and and go about the rest of your year and she obviously came off the court crying and was talking to her team and just was having a really hard time and that's that's a lot of the sport too mm -hmm. there's a lot of losing like like we talked about with what the some of the men said so I thought they did a good job of showcasing all of that and really the only <laughs> the only success story was on so out of mm -hmm. the, the women so it was fun to see her succeed. And yeah, overall, I really liked the women's episodes and I thought that they showed vulnerability, but also a lot of power and, you know, perseverance for those women. Yeah, definitely. I, I thought the women's episodes um, in terms of like getting into the characters more, I thought they were more interesting. Like they definitely yeah. showed the more um, just personal side of, of what goes into to being a pro tennis player. And and the sacrifices you have to make, you know, whether it's like, you know, they got into uh, Bedosa's struggle with depression. They talked about Ans Jabur and her husband, you know, they were talking about how they want to have a baby, but right now they got to focus on, you know, the goal of trying to win a grand slam. And um, so just, you know, it, I don't know, sometimes guys, you know, try to act tough and not get into some of that stuff. But um, yeah, obviously I just thought it was more interesting from a character side. Um, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And then obviously results, like you said, Ans had, had the best results. Um, and I'm sure she'll be also prominently featured in the second half of the show since she uh, made the finals of two slams back half of the year. But yeah, it was uh, it was super interesting. And, 
you know, a lot of like retirement talk from multiple yeah. players on the women's side. So like, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later, but <laughs> that was just like, wow, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's crazy to hear that sometimes. So. Yeah. Especially since none of them are really that old. If you think about it, it's crazy. No, exactly. Um, and then the only other thing worth noting before we get into the categories, Tomjanovic, most people know not dating Berrettini anymore. So that kind of hung over the, you know, you're kind of thinking about that as you yeah. watch him. But, I'm uh, sure like in that one clip, I think it was Maria Sakari asking her when they were going to see each other next. And she was like, I think Indian Wells. Yeah. Which I mean, <laughs> that's a, I mean, I guess it's not, it is a significant like a amount of time. And a, in it's like a month and a half. Yeah. And I'm sure they're, that's what most of their year looks like. They probably go two to three even three months in some instances without crossing paths or depending on results too. So I'm sure yeah. that was definitely n- not easy <laughs> to yeah. not an easy thing to, to do, to date one another, but at the same time, who are you, who else are you going to date? You know, that's, that's who you're yeah. surrounding with, surrounding yourself with your constant, they understand your schedule. So, but yeah, I liked their dynamics. So I'm a little sad that they're no longer together, but yeah. Yeah. It's uh... <laughs> It's, it's like you said, a lot, a lot of people end up dating people they work with, even though everybody says not to, and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but, uh, right. but yeah, when you see those people every day, all the time, um, that's, that's kind of how it goes. So, yeah. uh, all right. Should we get into the, the categories here? I think so. All right. I'm so ready. the first one, first one, goat quote, what was your favorite quote from the women in yeah. Great Point? Yeah. So I actually, thought this was kind of interesting because it was a theme with a couple of the players. So one was from Maria Zachary and she said, it's hard for me to put into words when you hear game set match, it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. And then later Paula Bedosa said the sport is a drug. So I thought that that was interesting, you know, that they both very similar quotes talking just about the kind of high you have in this sport. And just, you know, when you lose how badly you want to combat that and come out and win and just how much like you can just see the emotion and the passion that they have for the game of tennis. And I just thought that was interesting that they both kind of, those were themes of what they both talked about, like the high that you chase to win and come out on top and just all the emotions you feel similar to having an addiction, I guess it's, that's yeah. crazy to think about a sport as an addiction, but I'm sure a lot of athletes can relate to that as well. Just the amount of time and can, and the consumption that it has on you and the toll that it takes on your life, I'm sure can yeah. be comparable in, in certain circumstances. So those kind of stood out to me for, as far as quotes for, from both of them. Yeah. It's a, uh... The addiction thing. I mean, I think to be that good of a professional tennis player, you probably have to be a little bit addicted, right? Because if you're not, uh, you're do- you're spending a lot of time practicing and, and playing matches. So that's a, yeah. I don't know. I think the best players have to be addicted. Um, Curios is one that I guess yeah. <laughs> is famous for saying <laughs> that it's not his favorite sport and stuff like. That. You never know if he actually if you believe that, you know, because sometimes he kind of puts up a front I think but uh but yeah for the for the most part that that was interesting to hear too um yeah you know as a, as a former tennis player like I I don't know I never I never was playing for like huge money either like they are so I'm sure that also even you know that there's a rush it's like when you're playing blackjack at a casino you know it's like right man, gambling there's, <laughs> there's a lot of adrenaline going when you play in that even if it's for like five bucks so um seriously yeah that, yeah, that, that was interesting for sure um I had a one one quote. It's it's not my top quote, but uh, I speaking of Maria Sachary, I had this is my sixth espresso today. Is uh, <laughs> and do you think I'm the player on tour that drinks the most coffee? Have you ever had six espressos in one day? I've never had that. I think the most caffeine I've had in one like latte would be like a quad shot. So to have two wow. more, I couldn't imagine. And that's when I was like super tired. So the fact that yeah. she's like just drinking that yeah. daily that's that's a lot that's a lot Speaking of, of an addiction that's that's <laughs> yeah, an addiction right there that really is but oh. she is like so physically fit i can't yeah. even comprehend like her fitness level it's in absolutely insane 
That's probably why she has to drink so much coffee because she works out so much. Like I know how boring working out is, frankly. Uh, oh, I struggle seriously. with it, trying to do weights. It's just like the most boring thing to me. So maybe the uh, maybe the coffee helps her get through all that. And I don't know, but it's whatever it is. I mean, it's working for the most part because she's, uh, you know, top 10. And yeah, she's unfortunately she lost last night. But uh, I know maybe she needed a seventh espresso. But <laughs> yeah, one more to get her, get yeah. her through the morning. <laughs> Any other, any other quotes? I have one more, but I just wanted to. Yeah. I mean, I just thought it was interesting when Chris Everett was talking about Isla Mm. and she, she said that she kind of started to mentor her when she was 12 years old and that they became really close friends. And I thought it was interesting when she's told Isla, you're too nice. You got to be a Mm -hmm. little bitchy out there. I was like, you know what? Yeah. You see these, you see these women on the WTA tour with these intense game faces Mm -hmm. and it's, it's pretty crazy. Like I understand that they're different off the court, but when you're, you know, facing an opponent. So she said that that's, that's what is going to push Isla kind of over the edge and make her that much better of a player. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, definitely. Especially like she said, she's known her since she was 12. Obviously, neither of us were following Isla when she was 12. So we don't know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what she was like then or how nice she was. But and she is nice. But like, I, I do see that when she plays is, is like her trying to be, you know, like Chris ever said, you gotta be a little bitchy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've, I guess I've always had that impression of, of Isla because she just seems so tough. And um, mm-hmm. so must have uh, been incorporating that for, for, you know, the last whatever, 10 yeah. years or something. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a good one. My my last one was, and I kind of mentioned it in the men's episode, but Isla saying, in all honesty, it wasn't love at first sight, <laughs> talking about Matteo Berrettini, who I think most agree is one of, if not the best looking guy on tour. So most certainly he was trending on TikTok for that very reason. And so, yeah. Okay. I think. <laughs> yeah. Would you, would you ever say that? It's not, it's not love at first sight about it. I couldn't believe that. If anything, I thought the personality maybe is what needed to, to work on, right? But I guess that right. <laughs> was the opposite for them. So. That was funny. She's yeah. very honest. I mean, that's probably what he appreciated about her. She's not going to give any BS about yeah. that. She's laid it all out there. <laughs> yeah, definitely a power move telling the whole world like, oh, I I didn't think he was that good looking. So that was uh, that was pretty funny. That was funny. I love that. Very raw. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, never forget. So just most memorable or surprising moment from the, from the season. Yeah. So for the women's side, I mean, I have, I think I have to go with on winning Madrid. I mean, just, just, just talking about where she, you know, came from and the type of country that she came from in comparison to other players on tour. I think it was Maria Sharapova talking about that and just mm-hmm. how difficult that really is. And just, just the way she's been able to represent, I think she said Arab and African countries and just what she's done. And I'm sure what she means to that entire country and little mm-hmm. girls aspiring to, you know, be play tennis or to do a sport. I, I think she's just really kind of paved the way and just completely, you know, altered women's tennis in that aspect. And she is just such a good player. I mean, just Mm. some of the match footage that they showed during that episode was absolutely insane. Just some of the moves she's able to pull off where she can go in between the legs, you know, some of her overheads, just she's, she's just an amazing player in person. Yeah, definitely a lot of variety compared to some players on the women's side. I mean, she hits so much slice and drop shots and comes in the net and, you know, between the legs, like you said. So she, uh, yeah, she's really fun to watch and it is crazy to, I mean, she, she wears it in terms of like, that's mm-hmm. a lot of pressure for one player to like represent all of Africa. I mean, that's like, Oh, that's a lot. Um, you know, compared to some of these players, you know, that come from wherever Spain or countries that have so many good tennis players, you know, there's a little less pressure in that regard, but like every right. time Hans does something, it's like the first time for an African tennis player to do this so that's a that's a lot so yeah it was it was cool to see her her win that and excited to see and seeing 
just seeing the Tunisian flag, you know, at so many of her matches, even when I was in San Jose at the Mubadala Silicon Valley classic, Mm -hmm. there was this big section and they had a huge Tunisian flag. And she just said it meant so much to her because she actually didn't travel with her team. Yeah. It was just her there because she was doing a little experiment just to see how she could do. So she obviously has a lot of support and it's really cool to see. Yeah, definitely. I uh, got some stuff on ons later, but yeah, I, I totally agree. That was cool to see. So, um, so for most memorable, um, or surprising, I guess I just, I kind of said it earlier. I was like shocked to hear so much retirement talk. Um, yeah. you know, I, I guess we didn't really hear that on the men's side at all, but to hear like multiple, you know, Tom Yanovich said she was going to retire. Uh, <laughs> right. or she said she should retire after she lost that match to Bado. So who's like a great player. So that was kind of crazy. And, um, and then Sakari, you know, said she retired for like four days and uh, has been coming out <laughs> of retirement ever since. So like, yeah. I don't know, it just kind of shows how much pressure these players are under when they're like so young and like they're having great results and yet they're, you know, still unhappy um, sometimes, you know, and, and then Bedosa is like struggling with depression. Um, yeah. And being and I, open uh, about that kind of. Yeah. I think it just kind of shows like you, you just always compare yourself to your peers. You know, you never compare yourself to like, you know, as a pro tennis player, she's only comparing herself to other pro tennis players. She's not comparing herself to anybody else. And uh, no matter like what you achieve, it's just like, it's uh, I don't know. You're, you're always, <laughs> I don't know. You can just never be like hundred percent happy. It seems like sometimes on, on the pro tour. So that was uh, yeah, that was, that was interesting to me. Um, yeah, yeah, that's so. and like you said, people don't necessarily realize that how much pressure they put on themselves. And yeah, like you said, the comparison is crazy. Yeah. Uh must watch. So player that you are the most excited to watch after watching this series. Yeah. So even though she didn't get to play in the Australian Open because she withdrew due to injury, I put Paula. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm just excited to see what she can do this year. Um, like you just talked about, she She's been a big advocate for mental health and just Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, using her platform to express that it's okay to go through those mental health struggles and to be open about it and to do what you need to do to be okay. And she's, Mm -hmm. I just think she's a really fun player to watch just because she's so powerful on court. Yeah. And she's, she's one that I I would find intimidating if I had to play her just because the way she looks, she looks so intense all the time, but she is yeah. also a player that's so nice, but like on the court, you know, you don't want to mess with Paula Bedosa, I feel like, and you can also never kind of count her out. I feel like she, mm-hmm. I mean, I know the Madrid open episode kind of showed she, I mean, she got out right away. And I think that also kind of showed how much pressure was on her being her home tournament, mm-hmm. a big tournament. And she you know, she handled it as best as she could, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm excited to see what she can do. And I hope that she, her injury is quick and she's quick to come back. Cause I want to see how well she can do. Yeah. I mean, she had a very tough draw in that Madrid tournament they showed, I mean, to play she Simona did. Halep, like Simona's, I think they said Simona won the Madrid open twice. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. won Roland Garros. She, I think won the Roland Garros juniors too, which Bedosa did as well, but like that's, that's a, the it's only reason <laughs> that matchup happened so early is because Halep's had injuries and stuff. So she wasn't, I guess, seated. Um, so that was, that was a tough draw. And it even was. though, yeah, Bedosa was pretty tore up that she lost, you know, being like the favorite in her hometown. That's like, you know, it's not like she lost to nobody. She lost to a grand slam champion. So, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and honestly, like, she, like you said about her platform, I think her speaking up about depression is so huge because like, I mean, she's beautiful, you know, she's like gorgeous, just totally gorgeous. She, her boyfriend is like a 15 out of 10. (laughs) I mean, he's like, that guy's very pretty. (laughs) So they're a beautiful couple. Let's just put it that way. (laughs) Yeah. And she's a pro tennis player and like, she's, you know, top 10. And so just like, man, if she, if she struggles with depression, like literally anybody can. So, right. Yeah. That's a great point. You would never know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, um, this was tough. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to watch all of them, but, uh, I, I definitely am going to say Ans Jabir just because like she was so close last year to winning slams, you know, making two finals. And, uh, after seeing that conversation with her husband, like about 
wanting to have a, a baby down the road and like but first you know they have these goals in her pro career it's just like god you just wanted to win a slam so it's like okay you can have your baby now like yeah not that she needs to wait for that but like it kind of it felt like that's what they are waiting for is for her to to win a slam before they uh think about actually trying to have a kid but you, you could see like how much she they both want want one you know like when she's yeah want a family oh it's so cute yeah. And I thought it was interesting too that they said I think it was only three women came back to the sport after having a baby. Was that what it was? It was like three or it four. It was it was three that came back and won a slam. And won a so, slam. Yeah. So it's uh that's not easy. I mean Serena wasn't able to do it and she was, you know, the um whatever. She's like the greatest female player yeah. of all time if you're going off off majors. So yeah, that's it's not easy. Uh so we'll see. No. We'll see what um yeah, I, I just hope she can. I hope she can win one this year. So it's too bad she. Me too. She lost, but yeah, with another tough opponent. And the, I mean, anybody, anybody can win, especially like I don't know on the women's side. It's just so competitive, and uh, which I don't know that I guess that's why so many of these players struggle with some of these things, just because like man, it's uh, it's not easy. But no, and it's so yeah, like you said, it's the women. It's it's so hard to predict the women's draw. It's always so mm -hmm. hard to pick your bracket, I feel like for the WTA side, because it's just, you don't know, like you yeah. don't know who's going to come and look at how many top players are already out in Australia. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Other than Sviantec, it's like, right. She's oof. kind of the, yeah, <laughs> she's kind of like the Novak, like everybody knows that she's going to go far, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top for that side for sure. Yeah. But, uh, so on let's, let's get a slam. Let's have that baby. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um movie maker. So the episode or or just the the player story that you would want to see into a movie. Yeah, I think you know, obvious I think the obvious choice would be the Madrid Open episode just because it follows, you know, two very different players from two very different backgrounds, but I actually mm -hmm. think that it would be kind of cool to see a movie about Isla. Like I would watch that I think that her mm -hmm. story is kind of more unique because she was the lowest ranked player that they followed mm -hmm. and and she's still I mean top 50 she's still such a good player but I think that just you know her story would be really interesting and just especially like heading into these last five episodes with her run at the U.S. Open and just mm -hmm. I'm I'm really excited to see what they do with that story but even just in the Australian Open just kind of what she went through and just what what she's been able to do and kind of how she's on the upward climb in her career i'm excited to see her this year this season and watch her obviously unfortunate about australia as well yeah. um but yeah i i think she would be i would watch that movie i like the underdog story and kind of the let's see what you can do and prove everybody wrong so i think she would be a fun player to watch for sure yeah the serena match would itself be like if yeah, you just that could be a movie Isla's <laughs> yeah. life like leading up to that match <laughs> holy smokes that was that was very impressive her winning that match in front of that crowd where literally yeah. nobody was rooting for her and yeah and then obviously having to pull out of the you know after having such a good U.S. Open then having to pull out of your home slam just a few months later like obviously that would add some drama to it unfortunately but uh yeah that would for sure be a good story especially if she can come back and do some big things this year so, yeah, I would love to see it. Yeah, I uh, I had I had Anz Jabeur maybe a theme of my my answers here, but <laughs> yeah, just just coming from nothing, you know, they said it multiple times. Um, not coming from nothing, but just coming from a country that isn't you know a tennis country per se, right? Um, you know, they said it about like marketing, you know, signing endorsement deals and stuff. Like when you come from those smaller countries, the companies know like you you only reach you know, a certain number of people if you're from a smaller country. So like, they, they're not going to pay out regardless of like, whatever your ranking is, like, unless you win a slam, frankly. So I, you know, I think a movie about her, like trying to win this slam, losing two finals, you know, uh, I think yeah. somebody, somebody said recently, like losing in the slam final, like makes you so hungry, you know, like, so to lose two of them last year, I, I just think that, that would be a very interesting uh, movie. And then again, if she can like accomplish her goals and, uh, and then start this family, like just, I don't know, that would be the dream run. So I'd yeah. really like to see yeah. that. And she's just so nice. So oh, she's so nice. 
She's yeah. so personable. Like, mm -hmm. but I think people, people know that about her. Like you can tell on and off the court, just how amazing of an, of a person she is and just yeah. seeing her interact with her husband. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so entertaining. Like her episode was funny yeah. and how she talked about how they used to fight. Like, <laughs> Yeah, about first, like throwing so the medicine ball or something. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, and that's so her. Like, I, mm -hmm. I, I just thought that was. She's very real, and yeah, it's very, yeah. it's very cool. So I, I, I like, I like her. She actually is who I put for my season winner. Was Ons. oh okay, okay, yeah, Ons. yeah. I mean, it's hard not to pick her. Like you said, she, what a year she had, and then you know, winning the Madrid Open was huge. It's really exciting for her, and just. You know, she's right behind Iga. She's she's chasing her for that number one ranking. And that's that's a goal, obviously, that every player has. But she's like really close right on the cusp. So I would love to see her. Yeah, see her get there. Yeah, she's definitely going to have to uh, to steal a couple a couple slams this year to, uh, yeah. to pass her. I mean, Wimbledon, she made the finals, but there were no points last year. So right. I think I think Iga is like right now 5,000 points ahead of Chipper. Or so, oh my gosh. And grass isn't like Iga's best, you know, that's that's her weakest surface. So, on to right. like try to pass her, she's definitely going to have to like win Wimbledon. And uh, we'll see what happens at the, at the French. I mean, obviously, Chipper won the Madrid Open, which is like the biggest warm up tournament or one of before Roland Garros. So, right. If she can, uh, unfortunately, she's going to have to win it again just to not lose points this year. So that that's tough. Um, <laughs> but yeah, between those two and then like U.S. Open, you know, they played in the final. She's she's going to have to win that one too. But I don't know. We'll see. It's uh, obviously Sviantek was just like totally dominant last year and is looking very good this year. It's just, I think, one loss to Pagula. But um, I don't know. It's It's hard to... We've seen that, especially on the women's side, the last couple of years for the players that win slams and kind of have their breakthroughs. It's not always easy to stay at the top, whether, uh, I don't know, yeah. like Osaka, you know, had mental health issues and then Barty just retired, like rode off into the sunset and right. you know, <laughs> I rode had off ons, with a good, yeah. with a good win, but <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I had ons too. And I just think that like, you know, her, her yeah. humor and kind of lightheartedness, that's, I think that's going to like really serve her well. She tries to like battle all this pressure that these players have, because like we said with Osaka and Barty and like these players, they get to the top. It's really hard if, if you're not like, um, I don't know, like I, I feel Osaka's personality isn't, uh, you know, she's uh, introverted, right? So for to sure. suddenly just become like so, so famous and like the favorite and won four Grand Slams. Like that's really tough uh, if you're not like, uh, I don't know, extroverted or just, yeah. So I think it'll serve on as well. She tries to deal with all this pressure to kind of be yeah. like, I don't know, use, using humor as a, a cover a, or whatever a scapegoat but, yeah yeah but, um, <laughs> to try to combat the pressure yeah that's yeah. a great point and then and i had sicari as number two yeah um, she was that's a good that's a good choice yeah she uh it's too bad she lost last night um because god you can just like tell how bad she wants it and she just is it's always like right there you know when she loses it's close for the most part and uh oh I don't know. I, I want to see what she can do this year. She's been in like two major semis, I think, and lost both of them. And there was one of the U.S. Open 2021, I think, when Fernandez and Raducanu were yes. in the final. I think Sakari was in the semis, and uh, that was a tough one. So, yeah, I, I really like, enjoyed her episodes too. But, Me too. Um, do you think it's just like it's just so she's so in her head, and that's just really because obviously her skill set is there and her fitness. Yeah, I mean, I guess every tennis player is in their head to some degree. It's true. It's right. such a huge, huge part of it. But I don't know that that part where the coach stood up. He's like, I just stood up just to like distract her mind because I like to never throw stand her. up. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's that's interesting that like that's all it took is just one little thing that you don't normally do. So I don't I don't know if uh, it's going to take more of that, but I, it's just I guess one of those things where. I feel like once she can get over the hump, maybe it'll be, it'll be easier for her to, to win more titles, but yeah, just a lot of when you, when you've like been consistently ranked this high and, and still haven't like gotten your big title, it's, it's tough. You can almost feel like your window is like closing a little bit or just like the more you go out, like the more pressure you, you feel. 
you know, in the next tournament. Cause you're like, Oh, like how much more time do I have before? Like the people that are younger than me are like coming up, you know, and all of a sudden there's like another, another Coco golf or something like a 15 year old, 16 year old. It's like <laughs> whatever. So yeah. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll see what she can do this year, but uh, any other, any other thoughts on the, on the series overall for women or, or men even. Yeah. I mean, I just like, like we talked about last episode, I just thought it was really well done and, and I just really enjoyed each and every episode and it brought something different. So, um, I'm excited to see, you know, more women featured in the second half Mm -hmm. because I feel like it was a little bit ATP heavy. Yeah. Understand. I, I get, I get it. Like I, but I feel like the second half of the season has potential to kind of showcase, some more women who really, or even if it's some of the same players, which obviously, like we talked about with Ons, she's going to be featured in the second half quite a bit with her two slam finals. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, it's a really great series. It seems like there's been a really positive, positive thoughts on it for the most part. And it seems mm-hmm. like they're looking at doing the season two. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope they do. And me too. I don't, I don't know. I think for the most part, people in tennis have been really good about promoting it to to their friends and and talking yeah. about it as much as possible on social media um so yeah i i really like the series overall for the women's side i would just want just shout out courtney win the uh journalist who is is kind of a you know she describes what's going on a lot of times she's so good yeah she's she's super nice she was at san diego and uh, yeah. i worked with her for a week and really fun really really just down to earth and uh, it was fun to see her kind of narrating some of the the you know, background for the show. So shout out Courtney. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I heard her voice for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Courtney. And then they showed her. I was like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. It's interesting if you follow her Twitter, which if you're in tennis, you, you have to follow her Twitter. It's like, you know, a must. Yeah. Uh, she she locks it during Grand Slam. So like you can't retweet any of her tweets. So she kind of like keeps all of her own thoughts like in one place, like just on her page. So if you want to like if you want to know what she's thinking, like you just have to follow her. You can't like rely on other people to retweet, which she would have an insane number of retweets if it wasn't. Oh locked. my gosh. Uh, and yeah. quote tweets. And <laughs> like oh yeah. Like everything. I constantly for, for our tennis one Twitter, I'm like, oh, I want to retweet that so bad, but, <laughs> but that's uh, I don't know. Good for her. I think it's a, a cool strategy. So yeah, it's great. And I wonder, you know, if the second half, if they're going to bring in, anybody different like if they're gonna you know switch up the commentators or mm-hmm. you know I, I wonder what they'll do with the people that they interviewed or if it's going to be kind of similar with those coaches and and broadcasters we'll have to find out I guess in June yeah we'll see I'm excited to uh I we gotta uh, this is the thing with binging it's over you know I know I, I watched it twice I don't know how many times Me you watched too. it but <laughs> yep <yeah>. twice <laughs> yeah I already so. told my parents when I'm home I'm like we'll watch it yeah, watch I'm it sure I'll, I'll end up. My my fiance Maggie, we haven't watched it. Uh, <laughs> we watched the first episode together, but she hasn't seen beyond that. So, I'll probably see it a third time here. Oh yeah, but uh, it's a must for sure. Yeah, well, Madison, thanks for uh, breaking down Breakpoint. That was really fun, and obviously, yeah. we'll we'll do more of it as the show comes out in June. And uh, our next sure. podcast, I'm, I'm not even. It'll be. Let's see what day, I don't even know what day we're on. Friday, I guess Friday. it'll be early next week, maybe Monday. Just yeah recapping australian open action and i'm sure we'll think of some other fun things to talk about so for sure i'm sure there's always fun storylines too like we said with australia it's just a fun tournament and there's always some surprises so yeah always lots to lots to unpack for sure definitely thanks again hope everybody enjoyed it uh just a reminder if you have any like questions or comments uh you can put them in the uh in the comment section below this podcast article in tennis one so feel free to you know, comment there or even send us a message on social media at Tennis One app is our, our hat or our, uh, handle, I should say. So yeah, excited to hear from you guys and uh, thanks for listening.